Most sales and support teams struggle to answer technical questions quickly, especially when it comes to API documentation or anything integration related. Now, salespeople get stuck in meetings all the time when clients ask them questions about API details. And the reason why I know this is because I've been part of sales teams and this is a very, very common issue. And then on the other hand, you have support agents that often waste a lot of time digging through documentation just to answer a simple question. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build an intelligent rank AI agent using no code tools like NADN and Vectorize.io that directly connects to your API documentation, stays up to date automatically, and can instantly answer technical questions through Slack so any team can access it on demand. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video because I'm also going to give you this NADN template completely for free. If you're not familiar with these terms, don't worry, but I'm going to explain everything. So regardless of your background, you'll be able to build this thing out. This is going to be a super useful AI agent that you can use and sell for real life clients. So that way you can either monetize this or build this for your own business. All right, let's get started. All right, so this is the workflow in NADN. I'm gonna show you exactly how to get this for free, so that way you can just follow along. So all you have to do, I'm gonna put the link in the description to my free community, head over to AI Workshop Lite community. All you have to do is go to the classroom section, go to YouTube resources, and the bottom of every page, I have this NADN blueprint that you can download and upload to your uh, NADN workflow. And if you don't have an NADN account, I'll put the link in the description. You can free, uh, create a free account. But if you want to learn how to monetize these and learn how to create more business related workflows, and if you're a complete beginner for NADN, you can check out the paid community. I'm going to put the link in the description as well, where we walk you through the basics of NADN and the step-by-step -step build so that way you can start uh, building the skills. And on top of that, most importantly, we have a five-week day-to-day accountability program where we show you how to monetize your AI agent and it then skills to uh, get in front of clients, how to sell to clients, how to price your services. We also have an AI agency that I run. So all of that information from real life AI agency that we have, we post it on our launch your AI agency with NADN course, where you can literally see how to send contracts, how to price your projects. And again, we will teach you everything as far as your skills. So that way you can get up and start uh, applying this and start earning money with it. So make sure you join. I'm going to put the link in the description. Hopefully I'll see you on the inside. But anyways, let's get back to the video. So once you have this, so again, once you download that NADN workflow, all you have to do is go to these three dots and you'll import from file and bring over this uh, workflow right here. So let me show you the way this thing is set up right now. This is set up with Slack uh, to reach out to our vectorize.io. Again, I'm going to show you exactly how to build the, your act pipeline right here. But this has access to the uh, vectorize.io's documentation, but you can utilize and use any API documentation. And like I said, I'll show you exactly how to build this rack pipeline so that way you can put any uh, URL and it'll be able to utilize that. But essentially this has an access to this uh, vectorize.io documentation. So let's go ahead and test this thing out. So what I'm going to do is execute the workflow. So now this will be listening to Slack trigger here. By the way, if you have not Slack, installing Slack in NNN is a bit tricky. I also have a step-by-step -step guy on the paid community. If you want to know how to add Slack, I think it's on the beginner's course right here. So make if you're, uh, if you haven't installed Slack on your NNN or if you don't know how to do that, please check that out as well. But anyways, you can, instead of Slack, I mean, you can use something else as well. But right now, so th what this is doing, this is listening. As you can see, it says waiting for trigger. So now I'm going to pull up my Slack here. And I'm going to bring this over. And so I'm directly uh, direct, uh, interacting with this NADN bot. So all I have to do is just say at NADN bot. And now I'm going to ask it a question that says, what is a RAG pipeline? Because this is a very specific question that's going to be inside this vectorize.io documentation. So if I press enter, now this should execute the workflow. There you go. As you can see on the left-hand side, it's executing the workflow there. So now it's going to reach out to uh, the API documentation for vectorize.io. And there you go. Now I get a response for that particular question and reply to that question inside Slack, which is very important, right? Because you don't want to, uh, you know, clutter your Slack channel. You want to be able to respond to a specific questions in a reply. So let me expand this a little bit so you can see it. All right, there you go. So now it says a rack pipeline is uh, in vectorize enables fast real time retrieval by converting unstructured data like PDFs or docs into vector embeddings stored in database. So as you can see, it also provides the actual link 
to the API documentation where you can see exactly where it got this information from. And this is super important, especially when you're interacting with API documentation. So you're, if you're a salesperson or somebody who's working in that environment or a support agent, you want to actually understand where this answer came from so you can double check, right? That's a great thing about this. So that's how essentially it works. And if I go back here, you can see everything worked out fine here. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at how this thing worked. But before that, let's go ahead and build our uh, rag pipeline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head out to head on to uh, vectorize.io. Again, they give you a really good free account, so make sure you join that. I'm gonna put the link in the description. So I'm gonna go to rag pipelines and I'm gonna delete this so that way I can start again. So let me delete this. Okay, there you go. So now I'm gonna click on new rag pipeline. All right, perfect. There you go. So now it's just going to bring this over. It has this beautiful user interface. So you can start by adding your uh, name here. So I'm just going to say Slack and it then actually and it then Slack agent. Okay, or whatever you want to name it. That's fine. So the source this is very important. This is where we need to provide it a source. And there's multiple ways you can provide uh, a source to this. Now you can either upload documentation, but in this case, since we're going to be using an actual um, API documentation, we're going to use the web crawler right here. So go ahead and click on web crawler here. And here's where now you can add a new container. So this is where you can add uh, the name. So go ahead and do I'm just going to do vectorize docs test. Okay. And this is where you can put the URL now. Now, obviously for vectorized arrows, if I do docs, oh my God, I can't type docs. There you go. Docs the vectorizer. So this is the link to docs.vectorize.io. But again, you can put whatever you want and you can see these are the rack pipelines, different information for each particular URL here, but you can use essentially the same thing. And if you just put the general, the docs.vectorize.io, it's going to be able to grab all of the other uh, pages that are inside. So if I just copy this, go back to my platform here and if I click on paste so now if I create a web uh, scroll we'll, you'll see in the uh, afterwards once we initiate this or deploy this rag you'll be able to see that it's going to have access to all of the pages that's inside that particular URL right so you're going to leave everything as it is if you want to add additional uh, URLs you know so you can say add one or more allowed URLs or prefixes so that way it will read that URL um, if you want to again, but you don't have to do that if you want, uh, but this is just an optional thing. All right, extractor, everything else you're going to leave as it is, you know, this extraction strategy, the vectorize iris, which is right here, it's the next step too, and then here as well. So iris is a fine tuned vision model that's really good at uh, implementing or, or grabbing information inside like complex documents or complex images, for example, it's really good. I actually did a tutorial on this earlier as well. So feel free to check that out as well. But for this particular one, we don't need to have a vision model, right? Our regular rag pipeline is going to work. So you're just going to leave it as extraction strategy as fast, which again, it's a simple and fast extractor. The chunking strategy, leave it as default, but if you're, if you want to have any specific chunking sizes, you can change it right here, but you're going to leave it as default. Don't worry about enabling metadata extraction through Iris. Like I said, we're not going to need to use the vision model. So we're just going to leave everything as it is. And better, what we're going to do is select a, you can bring in your own AI platform. So you can essentially use your own open AI, open AI and better, uh, but we're going to use the built-in vectorize.io because it's a very simple one and it automatically uses the open AI three V3 small embedding model. You have you have access to multiple embedding models here, but the OpenAI V3 small is pretty good one. The vector database, you do have the option to uh, add your own vector database, like a pinecone vector database or a quadrant. But if you choose this built-in embedder, it's going to automatically go to the vectorized built-in vector database, which again, for our uh, use case is perfectly fine. All right, so that's literally all you need to do. So now all you have to do is click on top right here, deploy rag pipeline. So what this is gonna do is now it's gonna go ahead and start the process. It's gonna grab all of the pages that's inside that API documentation. It's gonna create the pipeline. It's gonna deploy the pipeline. It's gonna go through the whole process. But the great thing is you don't have to touch it. You don't have to worry about anything here. You're just gonna let it do its thing. And it's gonna go ahead and, and crawl that URL and grab all of the information that's inside that documentation. So let's go ahead and let this thing do its work and we can come back and take a look at it. In the meantime, let's go ahead and check out and see what's going on inside our NADN workflow here. 
Now, again, like I said, if you want, if you want to use Slack, which in this case is, it is a bit tricky to set up the Slack account right here. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you have to do. And again, I don't want to do that in this video because otherwise this is going to be like a 30 minute video. Um, so, but again, feel free to check that out. I've done the tutorial inside the community. So all you need to do is just add your Slack here. Once you do, uh, you're going to need to trigger on bot or app mentions because as you saw during the demo, I literally said at and it then bot. What is a rack pipeline, right? Because especially when it comes to real life cases, when you have a Slack channel, and if there's multiple people who have access to it, you want to be able to keep things clean. Therefore, you want to have somebody who wants a specific question answered. They can reach out to that particular bot. And therefore, the trigger is going to be at bot mention. You could do at any event, but I would suggest to keep it clean. Leave it as bot mention here. Everything else you leave as it is. Channel, you want to make sure you're selecting your channel. And in my case, I created a specific channel for this purpose. So that's why you can select there. All right, so as you can see right here, once you have everything set up from an, uh, the Slack trigger, it should be able to have access to this particular um, channel as soon as you mention at an end bot or at whatever bot you name yours. All right, let's go ahead and check out to see what's going on on the platform. It's still creating the pipeline, so we'll let it do its thing. And there you go, so it's starting to deploy now. So there you go. It says total documents, 122, total pages, 237. It's going to keep going, right? Because right now on the right-hand side, as you can see, it says initial population started, and then it's going to keep going. There you go. So it's going to keep updating it. And on the left-hand side, as you can see, it has three, uh, 1,348 free pages remaining. So that's a good thing that you get uh, up to 1,500 pages on the free account, which is plenty for you to start testing out. So let's go ahead and let, let, let this do its thing. And once it's done, uh, it we can come back and take a look at it. <clears throat> All right, in the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our HTTP request node. So the way to add these, so you literally have to, if you're new to NADN, all you have to do is click on add node and you can search here. So this is the HTTP request node right here. Like I said, you'll have access to this free template so you can have, all you have to do is just bring it over to your uh, NADN workflow. But if we go inside the HTTP request node, so this is a post request. We're reaching out to this particular URL. So just keep this as it is, which is basically the retrieval, which I'm going to show to you in a little bit once this is done. Uh, I think it's still working. Yeah. Yep. It's still working. All right. So once this is done, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. But actually, you know what? While this is working, I think we should be able to just go to the API. Oh, there you go. It's done. Perfect. Right. Let's see, deploy rag, yep, all those tops are good, yep. 100%, 100%, perfect. So it is done. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our HTTP request node. So as you can see, I'm sent getting the URL, and I believe the URL is, if you go to connect, there you go, this is the endpoint that you're going to reach out to, okay? So you're going to literally copy this, come back, paste it right here. But again, if you're just importing this to your workflow, everything should be already set up. Authentication, we're going to look. Uh, leave as none. We're going to send headers. So click on toggle the edit and headers. The specific headers below, as you can see right here, we're sending uh, authorization and the value is going to be your token. So the way to do that is all you have to do is come here, click on generate token, and you can name your token. The great thing is you can select a token that expires within an hour, day, week, month, or year, or you can select never expires. For mine, I'm just going to use, I just use the one hour so that way people don't copy my token there. But okay, so that's good. Now you don't need to do anything else as far as um, authentication. So just make sure you you put your token right here. We can also send a body. It's going to be JSON using JSON below. And if, let me expand this a little bit. As you can see, so this is the question because it takes three different parameters: question, num results, and then re-rank. You're going to leave everything as it is. The question is literally going to be the question that's coming in from your Slack. So it's literally this that I dragged and dropped, right? Let, all you have to do is just drag the text that's coming in, and that's going to be the question inside, right? Because this is the question we're sending to our NADN bot here. So that's all you need to do. And now we need to send this to our AI agent. So for our AI agent, we need to have a prompt. So the prompt is just saying a user asked the following question to our vectorized docs bot, right? And that's the question that's coming in from our uh, Slack there, which is, uh, let me minimize this right here. Right, so I'm doing the same thing, just dra dragging it there. Uh, and then 
uh, we retrieve the following helpful content to answer this question. Now, this is coming in from your JSON document, right? So this is coming in from right here. We're also stringifying this because we want to make sure that it is a string. Otherwise, it's going to give us a problem. As you can see on the right-hand side, it has all of this information that's coming in. So now we're giving it this uh, prompt that says, please generate the helpful concise response that answers the user's question, format it for Slack, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to say in keeping it friendly tone and, um, you know, a, a additional information to make sure that it's Slack friendly. So that's all you need to do. Um, and we need to obviously add a chat model. And I'm using GPT 4.1 mini. You can use whatever model you want. The simple memory, this is important. So you want to make sure that you're copying, pasting the event TS, which is basically that timestamp. Otherwise, your memory is going to throw an error. So once that's done, as you can see right here on the agent, it uh, gives us an output and it gives us that information that Rack pipeline and Vectorite enables fast, real time, blah, 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 all of that information, right? All right, so the next step is now we need to connect this to our Slack. So once the AI agent outputs the response, which is coming in from our Vectorize.io, so what you need to do is same thing, add your Slack account, and this is going to be the resource is going to be a message and the operation is going to be sent. We're going to send this specific information to a channel, specifically to the channel, which is the NADN bot. And <clears throat> if you uh, created a separate channel, make sure you are uh, putting your right channel there. All right, so the message type is going to be simple text message, and the text is literally this that we're grabbing and dragging and dropping right there, right? Uh, the reply message, so this is another important thing because again, we want to make sure that uh, we're replying to that specific message inside uh, this channel right here. So as you can see right here, it says reply. That's why uh, we have to set that up, this reply to message. And you can add the timestamp. And the timestamp, I'm just grabbing it from right here. It says event TS. That's what I dragged right here. Okay. So that's <clears throat> that's all you need to do. And afterwards, you know, as you can see on the right-hand side here, this is the output. And on the Slack, this is what it's going to do. So it's going to basically respond to each specific question in a reply thread, which keeps it very simple. And like it gives you that link so that we can have access to that particular uh, information that came from that specific link or that answer that came from that specific link, right? So very, very simple, very easy. And this is extremely useful. Like I said, you can use this and sell this very easily to, uh, you know, especially if it's like a smaller company. A lot of times they struggle uh, to, you know, reach out people like especially the sales or support teams they're always struggling to reach out to engineering or product team if they get stuck answering the questions it's very very frustrating so that's why this is such a useful tool because it gives you uh, that direct answer from a spe specified resource and the great thing is uh, if you when you use vectorize.io on your rack pipeline you can actually identify and tell this thing to keep going and updating this information and re-vectorize every, uh, you know, you can have a schedule right here. So right now it's mine, mine's locked because I have this um, free version. But once you have your uh, pro version, if, you've, if you're building this for an actual client, then instead of manual, you can just say it says your pipeline will run until all data is fully synced because it's manual. You can actually set this up so it automatically updates the sync schedule every as you can see, it has a sync schedule right here every um, 12 hours or every day or every other day or whatever it may be, right? So that's what makes it very, very simple because once you set this up, you don't have to worry about constantly updating. It will automatically do all of that. All right, so hopefully that you found that helpful. Again, this is super useful and you can sell something like this very easily to companies uh, because this solves an actual problem. All right, well, make sure you like and subscribe. And again, uh, if you want to join the community to learn how to uh, sell this to clients or workflows like this and get your first customer, make sure you join the paid community. And if you want to have access to that uh, uh, template and everything else, make sure you uh, take a look at the uh, light community inside the YouTube resources in the classroom section. All right, make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.